Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthspan newsletter. First, a disclaimer. In this newsletter series, we will share the latest research studies and news and events in Healthspan field that we have found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on ageing research. Thank you so much for your support. In our newsletter number 12, we mentioned that Ms. Tanaka Kane in Fukuoka City, Japan, was born on January 2, 1903. She is recognised by the Guinness World Records as the world's oldest living person, who is now 118 years old. In this newsletter, we shall talk about another lady in Japan who broke a world record recently. Miss Mariko Yugeta, a 62-year-old woman, is the first sub-three female marathon runner in her 60s in the world. Her previous world record of two, 2 hours, 59 minutes and 11 seconds was broken by herself last Sunday in the Osaka Marathon with a time of 2 hours, 52 minutes and 13 seconds, which is 7 minutes faster than her previous record. Yugata's time was good enough to put her in 48th place in the overall female ranking. The first paper we will look at today is this one. Effect of NMN on Tumor Formation and Growth in Lung Cancer Mouse Models NMN is a precursor to NED, but its role in cancer is not clear. It may promote tumor growth by boosting NAD levels in cancer, but it also appears to prevent the formation of liver and pancreatic cancer in mice. The current study was to see how NMN affected the growth of lung cancer, again in mice. First, the authors treated mice with NMN for two weeks, then injected them with cancer cells, and three weeks later examined the tumor size and volume. They also looked at whether NMN could inhibit growth in existing tumors. The summary of the results are here. Tumors formed in 100% of the mice, implying that NMN was not protective against the tumor formation. The tumor growth was also found to be the same implying that NMN did not promote lung cancer growth either. In some ways, a good negative result, showing that at least for lung cancer, NMN appears not to promote tumor growth. The next paper we have today is this one. The paper is about taking human fat cells, the adipocytes in the title, and turning them into multipotent stem cells by putting them into a solution containing PDGF-AB and 5 azacytidine which can then be used to regenerate muscle. But first, what is a multipotent stem cell? You may have heard of pluripotent stem cells as an induced pluripotent stem cell created with the Yamanaka factors. These can then become any kind of cell in the body. A multipotent stem cell has undergone one more level of specialization and can only form tissues with the same germ layer. However, they can form any tissue of that germ layer type. The goal of regenerative medicine is to restore functions by reconstituting dysfunctional tissue. Most tissues have a reservoir of stem cells for this purpose. Bone marrow transplants and tissue grafts are used for this, but harvesting and expanding stem cell and progenitor cells are not currently viable. In vivo tissue is complex with a mix of cell types, which are derived from a mix of stem cell types Hence, the desire to use multipotent stem cells, which can grow into different types of tissue. The cells need to, be, to do this based on cues from the environment and to react in a context-specific way without forming the wrong kind of tissues or tumors. Previously, the authors had shown how to take terminally differentiated stem cells and convert them to IMS cells. They did this by culturing them in a medium of azacitidine and platelet-derived growth factor AB. Although the precise mechanism is not known, we can see that the effect was to express the Yamanaka factors OCT4, KLF4, SOX2 and CMIC, as well as C1 and NANOG. Here we can see that the IMS cell supported the tissue regeneration in vivo in a context-dependent manner without forming teratomas, that is to say, depending upon the error they were injected into without forming cancers. The authors also showed in principle they could create colony forming unit fibroblasts using a modified form of this protocol. 
So here is the summary of how the process works in therapy for humans. Fat cells are extracted. They will be treated with the process, which takes two weeks. The cell's hard wiring is relaxed. They become multipotent stem cells. They can then be injected into the injured area where they can provide stem cells for regeneration. A really interesting line of research which seems to be able to make multipotent stem cells in a much simpler way than methods that use nuclear reprogramming. And finally, a look at caffeine and oolong tea and how they affect fat oxidation without affecting energy expenditure or sleep. So in summary, oolong tea and caffeine acutely increase energy expenditure, but only oolong tea stimulates fat oxidation over time. In the study, 12 men drank oolong tea, caffeine or a placebo, and on day 14 they were tested. What the authors found was that fat oxidation increased by about 20% without changing energy expenditure. The decrease in respiratory quotient by oolong tea was greater than that by caffeine during sleep. As a note, respiratory quotient is a measure of the amount of carbon dioxide you expel when compared to the oxygen inhaled. This number is different between burning fat and burning carbs, and the number for fat is lower. Hence, a lower RQ would imply more fat burn. They do see evidence for more fat burning, but as they say in the conclusion, a longer trial would be needed to see if this would reduce body fat over time. And so for me, this says I should continue drinking my oolong cha as it may be helping me to burn fat. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the newsletter informative. As we find more interesting research and longevity news, we will release our next newsletter, so please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button and select all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.